Welcome to Loud Librarians Lead with Laura Kelly. Joining me today is Sarah Myers, Library Assistant from the Custer County Library, and Carla Bieber, Library Director from A.H. Brown Library, to talk about Harry Potter-themed programming. Welcome, Sarah and Carla. Hi, everybody. Sarah and Carla, can you tell librarians across the state why you chose the Harry Potter series to incorporate in your programming? We at our library have really loved having Harry Potter as a theme for our programming because we feel like it really helps unite different generation groups. The old, the young, they, it's something that everyone can kind of get into. I grew up listening and reading Harry Potter, so I remember even riding in the car with my parents on road trips and we were just driving down the road listening to Harry Potter. So it's just one of those instant bonds that you can have cross-generational, I feel like. Really, it's just we wanted to capture that audience and that excitement. So that's why we love Harry Potter. It's so fun to focus on a series which can gain a lot of interest in reading as well as just pulling people into the library. Exactly. How about for you, Carla? We had a different take. We do Hogwarts versus just Harry Potter. And the reason we did Hogwarts is because it's a school. And you still get the magic, but you can sneak in science and literature and math and opens it up to a whole lot of other aspects than just Harry Potter himself. So just taking some of the spin off of what is already going on in the series and trying to implement that into your library. I'm sure for you Potterhead librarians out there, you're all aware that Harry Potter's birthday is coming up on July 31st. So hopefully we'll give you some great ideas today and how you can start planning. Sarah, you created a Harry Potter escape room for the Custer County Library, and I know that's gone on for several years now. Can you kind of explain how you got started with the escape room and a little bit about your journey? We have loved doing our escape room. My fellow coworker, Thea, she actually started the escape room project in 2019, and she kind of came up with the idea because she felt like there was a buzz about escape rooms. People are wanting to, it's a challenge. Can we escape? You know, it's just, people are kind of drawn to that. And she put out feelers of like what potential themes people would want to participate in. And one of them was Harry Potter. And so we jumped right on board with that because it's something we could get into as well. She did year one based off of the Philosopher's Stone. And then when I came on board, in 2020, I'm like, Thea, we, we got to keep the momentum rolling. So we went ahead and did year two, but we had a little bit of COVID creativity going on. We had to do a digital escape room. So we had that learning curve of using Google Forms as a avenue to have that digital escape room experience. So I do have the link. It's still a live link if anyone wants to see if they can escape the Chamber of Secrets. Uh, 2021, we did the Prisoner of Azkaban. And since we already had all that experience with an escape room, but we were allowed to do in-person programming, uh, we kind of did a hybrid situation where the Google form still kind of paced and validated the participants' answers. And so we, we kind of built upon what we had and we didn't have to reinvent the wheel. We kind of just added to what we started with. Some of the things that kind of helped us Get that going is we have escape room kit that is by Breakout EDU. So it comes with blocks and, and boxes and whatnot that it kind of gives you a good base to get started. Building the, the puzzles and the decorations was really fun. For me, I have a Pinterest board where throughout the year, just kind of like, ooh, I like that idea. That would really go well with year six or, ooh, this would go really well with this current year. The idea of I need to get this all done now, you can break it up throughout the year. And, it, and it's so great because everyone can, can be contributing as you come across exactly. something, right? So you're not like, okay, think think escape room right now. And then you have to create it. I love yes. hearing about how COVID led you down a different path with <laughs> the virtual. And then you could combine that for the, for the next year in 2021. So, yes, exactly. Yeah. I think one of our biggest mantras for doing the puzzles and for the decorations, because like you can do a lot of zhuzhing by just a little bit. So our mantra was low cost, but high impact. Like what's something that will be really impactful 
but it didn't really cost us that much or like energy wise. So we had decorations throughout the room that would be like the monster book of monsters, or we had divination cup that was part of the clues, but it kind of gave you the feel of you, you walking into book three of that. So it was really fun, low cost, but high impact. Got to set the scene, right? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Now, Carla, yours, uh, as you stated earlier, is on the Hogwarts theme of a camp. So how did you set up camp and how does it look in comparison to the beginning when you started? Well, we started basically because we had all these kids coming in that have never been able to go to a summer camp. And there was a great divide between the kids that were able to go and the ones that couldn't afford to go. So we thought, yeah, we can do a mini camp, three days, have some fun with it. We started off with that and we used Hogwarts and mixed in the science. And first year we had one of the ladies from our pet store come in and she brought their big giant snake and the kids got to learn about, you know, how to care for that. We did a devil snare where the kids had to crawl through double-sided tape to get through the devil snare without getting stuck. And that was a blast. So when in, later we started doing an evening at Hogwarts for our adults, we repeated that a few years later. The, the adults were just as fun as the kids watching them try to make it through. We always have some kind of scavenger hunt each year. One year they were riding broomsticks to collect keys. We had another one where they had to read clues and find all of the horcruxes. We try to keep new things, add new decorations every year. We added a few years ago a Dementor, and we have him hanging from the ceiling. We don't use him with the kids because he kind of scared a couple of them, but our adults enjoy him. From our beginning to now, the kids that were in the first few groups are now old enough that they're helping as our prefix. We have one or two prefix for each house, and The kids that are too old to camp get to come back and participate in camp and help out the younger kids as a prefix. We are replenishing our workforce with the kids that got to come before. It's so excited that they're they're wanting to come back and still be a part and giving them some leadership opportunities. And as you stated, um, you know, if they're not able to attend a camp, this is something special just for them. And even your adults want to join. I love that. As Sarah mentioned earlier, it just kind of touches all ages, which is is really great to bring them into the library that way. We had to add the adult night because we had so many adults that were coming in complaining that they grew up with Harry Potter. The kids didn't. They needed to be able to go. So they don't get the three-day camp. They get a really nice evening where we provide a lot of fun. And unlike the kids, we do like trolley goodies. And Stacy, my coworker, she is a whiz with building boxes. So she does all the, the goodie boxes for on our trolley. And she is awesome. She's my right-hand person, I guess. Stacy and I both, if we come across something during the year, we'll file it into a giant binder. And it's kind of our, our Hogwarts Bible because we have a Pinterest board and that's fine and dandy. But sometimes you find things that aren't on Pinterest that you go back to look for and the website's gone or they've updated and new things are on it. So we just put it in there in our great big overstuffed book and use it when we need it. And it's so great to, you know, know that this is a team effort, that you're both working on it together and you can bounce ideas off of each other to create your adult night and your camp together. So Sarah and Carla, what's next in the wizarding world for you guys? We are going to continue to do our camp. We only missed one year from COVID because we were shut down, but we do everything in person. We do it unplugged so the kids aren't using devices. We love the physical activities as well and the education. We've done things in the past like our scooter board, team building things like the balloons and we've done popcorn races where they have to fill little buckets on their shoes with popcorn and run them down and put them into a bin and whoever wins the one with the fullest bin. We actually do have a house cup which is made of a flower pot and candlestick and some door handles but it looks really cool. 
<laughs> it's a big trophy. We have a house point collector where each house can earn points or lose points. And we collect those in just a little container that we've made. And every day the kids compete and they work towards it. They get points for dress code and behavior. Willingness to participate is a big one also. We've had to, in the past, dot kids because one of our big rules is you have to wear shoes. You know, shoes that tie and stay on because we do a lot of running around. And if they wear flip-flops, somebody's going to get hurt because they're going to fall out of their shoes. And another one is they have to have shirts that have sleeves, no bad language, no advertising because you want to be positive. But we've also put in there, help the other teams. You can earn points by that. You can earn points by, you know, staying and helping clean up. They get points for doing trivia. At the end of each day, we do a little bit of trivia. And it's not all Harry Potter trivia. It's a lot of like goofy riddles and things. We do that and they can earn points. We don't generally lose points. Most of the kids are pretty good, but we did have one year where we had one house that lost a lot of points from one child because he had a very bad mouth. But his teammates got after him. So the last day, he was really, really good. It's, it's so fun to kind of um, encourage them to have that positive be- behavior and teamwork together and it makes them feel like a team, right? When they're mm-hmm. divided into their houses. And- we, we do sort each of the kids into their houses. We have a sorting hat that they get to wear. They each have their own house. That's their little team. At the end of day three, we generally have them do a t-shirt of some type. We've done multiple kinds of tie-dyeing from just regular tie-dye to permanent marker tie-dye and then spray bottle dye over tape, like color relief kind of thing. One year we did house pennant flag instead. And one year we did a luminary jar with pixies on it. But most of the time we do the t-shirt, that's like their camp souvenir. Because if you go to a regular camp, there's always some kind of camp store that you get to take something home. So we try to do something fun that they can take and have all year round. That's so great. Everyone wants a camp souvenir, right? How about you, Sarah? What are your future plans? Currently, we're working on year four, the Goblet of Fire. So we're still in creation mode and creating the puzzles. So to do my prep, I've read the book. You have to re- refresh yourself on the plots and themes, do our research. And then from there, um, I kind of visit my my Pinterest board that I've been collecting ideas throughout the year. And it could be puzzles. It could be decorations. But then I kind of just plug in these puzzles and fill it in as needed. As a little teaser for this year, I am experimenting with invis- an, an invisible ink puzzle. So I'll paint a picture with baking soda, water mixture, and then the kids need to find some rubbing alcohol and turmeric. So there'll be a way that they'll have to find that. They'll mix that together and then we'll paint and they'll reveal the dark mark. So just kind of like in the graveyard scene at the very end, when it starts getting a little, little spooky, they'll, they'll see the dark mark and, and there'll be a clue or a, a, something to point them in the right next direction. It's yellow and red. It kind of looks a little bit like blood. So <laughs> I'm kind of excited about where this, where this leads us. I think really we found something that works and kind of and build with it. So we have the kids try to beat the librarian's time. We have Doris Ann test out the, the escape room just to see like, okay, what's the flow? And then the kids, when they come, they get to try to beat the librarian's time. So they're just so excited to like, oh, we beat the librarian. Soon we're going to be sending out invitations to year four of Hogwarts. We have people sign up for the escape room just so there's not too many people in the room, make it a pleasant experience. And we'll have a letter from Professor McGonagall inviting them to year four of Hogwarts. So we're excited. I'm sure that they are just asking about when when it's going to happen. I'm sure they even know because it happens to over close to Harry Potter's yes. birthday. And as you said, they're just anticipating that because you've built it up yes. every year and they've had a great experience. With We've it, had you know. several kids already ask, oh, when's the escape room going to be? When's it going to be? They're just, they remember it from last year that they're just excited to to do it again. 
Awesome. Uh, Carla, I just thought of one more thing. You mentioned this year that you were going to start working, um, doing a a Mystic Beast and the suitcase, right? We have an individual who has helped us in the past and and was a former camper that thought they'd like to help this year by putting together our scavenger hunt. I do one each year. This year, they wanted to do one more on the Fantastic Beast. So we, we started collecting animal ideas And we've got the suitcase printed and we'll hide all the little animals and then they have to find them and they'll put them in their suitcase and compete against the other houses and see who gets everybody found first. How fun. I'm sure that's an activity they look forward to every year. That one is one of them, yes. I think with the kids, our biggest activity they look forward to is our last day we do capture the flag. That that has always been one of our big draws. The kids love that last day. And so far, we've been lucky and it's not rained. (laughs) Because we'll just go across the street to the city park and we'll do our capture the flag. And they look forward to it each year. It's like a little Quidditch going on, right? (laughs) It is a little bit. Awesome. And like you said, they get that exercise and outdoor activity as well. So, and great teamwork in that one. (laughs) Yep. Well, I like to wrap up the vlog each time with a few book recommendations. What would you ladies recommend today? I just found the cutest book for early readers called D is for Dragon. It's a little primer that shows magical creatures um, for each letter. And many of the creatures found are in the Harry Potter books. So it's super cute. If I were to personally be recommending something for little kids, I feel like anything by Mo Willems is just the best. He is a rock star, hands down. Um, If we're wanting to incorporate or encourage um, some series, to continue reading some series, um, a series that I found that's very, very rich and detailed, like it's a world that you can kind of just jump right into, is by Megan Willen Turner, the Queen's Thief series. So. Uh, It's a series I have read multiple times and each time I find just as enjoyable. Thank you. How about for you, Carla? Well, with us doing Hogwarts versus just Harry Potter, I would suggest doing science experiments, um, cookbooks. We have one, it's quite old. It's a little witch cookbook and it's designed for kids. Uh, But anything science fair, works great if they want to continue after reading harry potter we've suggested um the septimus heat series or something by evi botson wonderful we're always looking for books to say okay you like this try this right and so having another series to recommend is is so powerful how fun to dive into those cookbooks that, and doing those. It's chemistry, right, in, in our cookbooks as well. So, well, thank you, Carla and Sarah, so much for visiting with me today and sharing your book recommendations and your knowledge of themed programming. Thank you, Laura. It was fun. <laughs> and remember, librarians are not just buns and shushing anymore. Bye, South Dakota librarians. See you again soon.